All right, Fabio, uh, I want to thank you so much for making time to chat with me this morning. And um, I want to I want to dive right into it because uh, I want this to be something that uh, people can watch and and really get a lot out of. And uh, we'll we'll have to go on less tangents than we usually do, but uh, we'll we'll get this some good information out there for folks. And I would say, uh, just quick, you know, for everybody, anybody that doesn't know, I'm Brett Jones, Strong First Director of Education. Uh, Fabio Zonin, um, Master Instructor, Strong First Italy, um, the brains behind a lot of programming information with uh, Built Strong, Plan Strong, uh, working with Pavel and programming improv and everything else. So it, if there's anybody in the world I want on to talk about programming, it's Fabio. Uh, so we're just great to have you today. Thank what I want to dive are so high, Brett. <laughs> well, <laughs> I kept mine nice and low so that I can sneak underneath of it. Um, but I want to dive right in. Um, what makes Strong First Programming unique? First, principles. It's based, principle based. It is, and it's proven principle, effective principles. So we do have some principles around which we can. Uh, of course, we're going to list around which all of our programming is based on. And those principles apply to no matter the training tool you're using. So whether you use a bar, barbell, a kettlebell, you work body weight, or any other implement, we don't cover specifically with straw thrust. Those principles are universal and have proved through through the decades that they are effective. Absolutely. And when I pull back and look at it from the uh, 30,000 foot view, uh, which eventually people will stop using that analogy, uh, probably because I started using it. Um, but when you pull back and you look at it from that 30,000 foot view, uh, and now that I understand what a student of the strength game Pavel is, uh, which I never, I, I finally understood at programming improv, just how deep his knowledge goes into this and his passion for this. Um, I've always known he's brilliant and and has tremendous information, but he stands there and talks with command of so many different topics and so many different aspects of the strength game. It's it's amazing. But what Pavel's done and what we've done have we've taken the old school and these tried true. Uh, sometimes lost and rediscovered training strategies of old time strongmen and and other areas and combined it with the new science and, and validation of some of those uh, uh, older training aspects. Uh, we've reverse engineered uh, programming into this very dynamic, uh, amazing system that we have. And to your point, principle based and something that you can apply across the board. But I think it's important to recognize some of the stuff we're validating what the old time strongman did, and we've added the new science to it. Um, and you and, and Pavel and, and members of our team have really taken it and progressed it um, just in an amazing fashion. It is interesting as we are continuing to explore, it means that we keep finding new studies new you know new research but also it's interesting because we take a look at what's out there even what seems you know just came out and if it seems smart if it's interesting if you know we just dive into it and try to reverse engineer it and to understand what are the principles uh upon which it's based so we keep exploring and Paul is incredible because uh i, I don't know we both get email from Paul like oh what do you think what would you what do you gentlemen think about this specific plan or this idea? And so we're ready to embrace new stuff. It's interesting because most, if not all of the times, when we reverse engineer it, it is a new way of applying principles that are always the same universal principles. However, they allow us to grow and to make it better and to refine, to sharpen the break, the lay, you know, and so on. Definitely. And, you know, we've mentioned principles a couple of times, so let's just kind of do that real quick. And, you know, we talk about continuity of the training prog uh, uh, program, we talk about waviness, and we talk about load optimization. 
And, um, you know, continuity of the training process is pretty simple. Um, you're going to keep the, the, the goal, the goal, and you're going to train in a, in a manner that, uh, if, if you want to be good at the bench press, you're not going to go run marathons. So there's, there's a, it's, that's about as simply as I can put it. Um, and you guys talked about it in programming improv, and I was just listening to a podcast you were on and the, the difference between, uh, stimulating a response versus stabilizing that response is why continuity of the training process is so important. Definitely. So this was the first one. Second one, low waviness. Do you want to cover it? Do you want me to go ahead with this one? Do it. Okay. So here's the thing. You cannot push on the pedal at all times. You're just going to hit the wall. But at the same time, you cannot just train light all the time because it's not going to stimulate any of the patient. You need to wave the loads. And this means intensity and volume. You have to wave them, of course, in a structured manner. There are several ways to do it. But you need to provide some loads that uh, force your body, stimulate your body to adapt, and some loads that allow your body to recover. By the way, stimulate is one thing, and you adapt your recovery. So you need them both. And then you need some loads that allow to stabilize and glue whatever you have obtained through stimulation and adaptation. So loads need to be weighed. Again, there are upsides in pushing on the pedal. There are upsides in taking an easy day, but you can't live in one place only. You need to explore them all. And this is closely tied to load optimization because in looking at uh, some of the most successful training programs ever used, the load ends up centralizing around a, a certain level of uh, RM or intensity. And this allows for the waviness because we're not, uh, it was uh, my first first workshop ever with Pavel when somebody brought up uh, saying from the cross country skiing community, only the mediocre are at their best all the time. Uh, everybody else has to peak and wave and, and vary their training. And so load optimization plays into that as well. And it's interesting because, you know, one thing that we also do is we wave the intensity, we wave the volume, of course, with a structure programming behind it, but we also wave the effort. It means that we may change the intensity from session to session, or we may change the volume from session to session. We may change the effort from session to session with the same other with the other parameters remain the same, but even within a session from set to set, which is something that I think is unique in our system. So varying, for instance, the rep count with the same weight within the same, within the same session. Uh, one strategy is ladder training, but we also have other strategies that are in place, which make it, makes it particularly interesting and effective. Definitely. Okay. So, and that, that's that's kind of a sneak peek behind the curtain of some of the principles. And, and I can tell you that it's based on, I've always said that simplicity is purchased at the price of complexity. And that's probably a, a, a riff of a quote from somebody somebody else that much smarter than I am. Uh, but, you know, we there's a deep uh, study in science behind simplifying it into those principles. But old marketing principle, people listen to one station. W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? So what is in it for me in Strong First Programming? Results, first of all. Uh, and one of the things that not all of those who are currently listening to a, to a chat know is that before we launch out their plan, whether it's an article or, you know, or part of our app or a new book by Pablo Suero. We test it sometime for years. How long have we been testing 033 before it became quicker than that? Uh, four, four yeah. years. We send it out to a whole lot of testing subjects. We collect all their results. We make it better. So it becomes version A, version B, version C, and so on. And when we 
we take the best version and this is what becomes the plan we comes out there so it's not just because first part is having the idea second part is creating the plan third part third part is does it really work in real life and how many adjustments you have to i'm thinking about you know people who work with it services and computer graphics and so on you say the structure of a website or a program is easy but then refining the web page and doing the little graphics, it takes more time than all the all algorithm behind it. That's the same thing in programming. You know, the idea of laying down a template is easy. Refining takes months, years. I would say years. Absolutely. So everything we launch out there is tested. So first of all, it works, but it has several other benefits. Uh, lay them out. Because I, I oh, think uh, I yeah, go I'm, 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 here, I'm here to learn. <laughs> well, the, another great benefit is uh, not only you get results, but the uh, cost of those results is not high. Let me explain what I mean. Uh, our programming is based on practice and training. So we don't work out. We don't end up, you know, when you do a, one of our plans, you don't end up, you know, pooping in a bucket or feeling sore for days and days or uh, sacrificing technique and form to do the reps or to do the weight. Uh, every single rep from the setup to setting the weight back down has to be perfect. It's perfect. You always stay away from failure. You stay away from discomfort. You stay away from pain. And you're not sore the following days. If it happens, it's incidental. And it's incidental maybe when you do the plan the very first time. And it allows you to enjoy the rest of your life because you won't be limping for three days after a training session. And but you will be perfectly fine. And also you can become stronger while endorsing and playing other activities, other sports, for instance, or taking care of your hobbies, whatever, you know. Your, your life, life calls who you do. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, if we, if we look back at, you know, uh, some of the training programs and, and things, uh, Pavel obviously has a very tactical background, having been in the military. And uh, if you train tactical athletes in a way that leaves them tired, sore, and unable to do their job, that's a bad thing. And so the training is meant to accomplish the results at the lowest possible cost. It is, it is my question now from the first time I saw Strong Endurance and started working uh, with Pavel and some of this stuff is that's the question that goes through my mind for a training protocol. What's the cost? And that's how how can I get that at the lowest cost possible? And if we approach training like that, um, you start to enjoy your training. Of course, because think about this. You know, 99.9% of people in the world are not professional athletes who can live out of the training, but they have a family, they have a job, they have a life, they have other things to do, and they can't be tired, sore. They need to take care of several other things. And of course, uh, training should not be a duty. You got to take it seriously. You got to be committed and consistent, of course, if you want results. I'm not saying it's going to be just an easy game. No, you need to be consistent and committed. However, however, it's, got, it's not going to take your life away, absorb all your life. It's not a duty. It's something you decide to do because you want to, but it's something you enjoy doing. Absolutely. And while we talk about practice, not workout, and we avoid failure, and we, we have a bunch of other things baked into our programming, it's not that you're going to have some challenging workouts. You're going to get challenged. Um, and, you know, sometimes people hear the, we don't train to failure stuff and things like that. And they're like, oh, you know, you're, you're not training hard enough. Um, jump in the pool. See, see, how, see how the water is. Um, we, we work. We, we get our work done, uh, but we try to accomplish it at that low cost. Um, okay, so benefits wise, and I, and I think, you know, just this, this overarching concept that um, we've, we've taken the old school, blended it with the new school, we've tested it, uh, we, we put this stuff uh, out there in a variety of formats, and we know 
people can access Strong First programming in a variety of ways at our workshops, at our certifications, plan strong, built strong, strong endurance, all terrain conditioning. Uh, we have a variety of formats, Powell's like books, like online courses. Absolutely. And now, and that's that's what I wanted to touch on because the Strong First training app is something that we've built and put out there and we've been layering in and adding Strong First programming to this app. And uh, as the person that's kind of been behind the scenes on that with you and Pavel and Pavel Macek and Guido, um, you know, we've we've continued to add programming to this and some the reason we wanted to hop on and do this is we get questions because most people that download an app, they want a follow along workout. Tell me what to do. Well, the strong first training app doesn't work like that. No, this is exactly what we wanted to avoid. We didn't want an app that tell you, okay, get your bandana on and follow along with me with some written you know, following the music and dancing or doing any other stuff. This is not the idea. The idea is providing structured plans that are effective, that have first a goal. So the first thing you find when you read the description or a plan, who is it for? Beginner, intermediate, advanced. What do you need? Kettlebells, barbell, body weight, the three of them, only one. And what is the goal? What you will get by the plan? So you can choose the plan according to where you are at and where you want to be after the plan. And then you can, within the plan, you can, in many of them, you can select variations of exercises. So you may choose the exercises, some of the exercises you're going to perform. And then you have a uh, progression. You have a progression, so you follow along the plan. You have a training log where you can you can add all your training weights. You can see, pro track, your pro uh, track your progress and so on. And then at the end, you have a final testing to see, to measure the results. The idea is rather than providing workouts with you know no no specific goal, the idea is leading you towards the goal and allow you to measure it. Of course, we also have practices because we probably should ex explain the difference between because we can find in the app programs, training plans, and practices. So programs have defined time frame, starting point, ending point, initial testing final testing, goal setting, measure the results. Practices are slightly different. You want to cover them up practice thread. It's freshening up my coffee. Uh, the, the practices are just that. They are sessions uh, that can be plugged into your training in a variety of ways. Um, the strength aerobics program that, that's on the app, simple and sinister that's on the app. Let's say you're, you're two weeks in between your set programming. You just finished uh, eight weeks of programming and you're, you're going to kind of switch it up and do something a little bit different for a couple of weeks. And then you're going to go into your next structured program. Well, you can go into those practices and you can select, you, and, you can do simple and sinister three days that week. And you can plug in strength aerobics on a couple of other days. And there's a bunch of other practices in there that you can look at. So those practices are opportunities to do to do just that, to make sure that you uh, can fill in those gaps, you can practice those skills, uh, get your training in. You know, if you've been heavy into a strength phase, coming back to a little more of a conditioning phase and kind of opening the body up a little bit. So those practices can be plugged into your training in, in just a variety of ways. Or if you just want to do practices, if you want to follow Simple and Sinister for six months, you can follow Simple and Sinister for six months. And so you can plug those in in a ton of different ways. And one thing that's interesting, the fact that you practice, do not expect not to get results. You're going to get results. Now, also, you may stay in a practice for other reasons. I'll give you a couple of examples. You decide to train for a marathon but you do need to maintain some level of strength. So you're training for something else, or you are a professional soccer player, or you are, so you, you're training for something else, this is your main training, and you need something like a side dish that allows you to maintain certain qualities over time, or, or 
Uh, another example, you have for the next six months, you will have to be traveling a lot. You will not be able to stick to a structured plan, but you want to enjoy your results. So you take one of those practices and carry on this practice wherever you are. You may take a body weight practice or one of those practices you just need a belt, one belt, you can do that. And you can keep going on with that one. So maintain your condition, whether it's your strength level, your conditioning, whatever, while you're pursuing something else or in a time frame doesn't matter if it's a couple of weeks or months or even one year in which you're pursuing something different or it does, you're not, your schedule, your life, do not allow you to stick to a structured plan with set days and times uh, and, uh, you know, training durations and so on, train within a week. So it's, those are great. And you just can take them over and they will be effective because still every single practice tells you as you realize that you have adapted to the plan, tells you how to progress. So you still get progress. If we say we practice in training, but our practices can be programmed somehow. Or lead Absolutely. To so, and I and I want to I want to highlight uh, something else in in relation to the app. And you know, our partner in the app is Jim Cloud, and we we come to them and we say can the app do this? And they come back to us in a few weeks and say, yes, the app now does that. And so we're constantly developing features. You know, we, we now have a timer and an interval timer that's, that's on the app. So you can do your quick and dead practice and, and time your rest periods and, and uh, do your work rest ratios. <clears throat> uh, we have the roll the die feature that's built into the app now and roll the die programming is uh, it's fascinating from the standpoint of forcing variability uh, in a way uh, it's consistent variability um, to use an oxymoronic uh, tag on it. Uh, and it's, it's really fascinating programming and it, it really does keep you guessing as to what's coming next. And we have that built into several of our programs and practices that are on the app now. And, and we keep adding features, which is yeah. great because everything we ask the team to do, they do it. They're great. So we started Definitely. by adding, you know, a choice of different exercises, then the timer, and then it's tool you may use. Oh, by the way, another thing that we do have on the app, in addition, you know, to the dashboard, to your training log, to all those plans and practices and those new features, we, have, we also have a li an exercise library exercise library with descriptions and with links to the videos so you can see the exercise. Again, you will not have your workout with the timer follow along with some, you know, disco music from the, nothing like that. You, this is a serious after serious training for results. And uh, so it, it makes it, it makes it really interesting. And the role of the die feature, by the way, which is something I really love because people think it's, oh, it's random. It's not. Now, yeah, I would love, you know, I, we can't show it here, but I have a full Excel spreadsheet, spreadsheet that for each a plan that Powell designs, you know, with the roll of the die, it's not just you get one and you have to do this and two. You may have different combinations. Like if you get either two or three, you do one thing. If you get four, one thing, something else, and five and six. There is a specific and calculated odds for each result, which means that through statistics, you know exactly your average intensity you're training on, what the average volume will be. So you have variability, variability within railroad, railroad tracks. So actually it's not random as people may think, it's an algorithm, it's structured, even if it doesn't look so, and it's never boring. Uh, nobody said there'd be math. <laughs> Well, there is, this is the point. No one has to do math except for, for me. But exactly. I the roll. data, right? So roll. you just have to roll the die, which makes it so user-friendly, kind of complicated for those who do the program because when Pavel, now I use spreadsheets. Pavel does all these calculations by hand, right? Yeah. So, and then I, then I sit back and wait till the two of you are done. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, there's one thing that I would like to cover about. <laughs> Not only the app about our program, which is uh, fighting boredom, variability, and so on. Because one thing they ask us is, 
how come you only do a few exercises? You know, how come you plan on raising two lifts, you know, four, six lifts if you're many? Why don't you add so many different lifts and so many different things, you know? Uh, don't you get bored of doing the same thing over and over? So I, I have my short answer. Uh, do you, I guess you have yours. Do you want to start? Well, I, I actually enjoy my training. Like I, 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 I'm actually today, I need to have a rest day and I'm having to like make myself take a rest day because I want to pick up the bell again. Um, I enjoy my training and I, I really uh, dive into this continuity of the training process and, and really keep it uh, front and center. And, and uh, just I, for me, I'm, I'm not bored because I get results and I enjoy my training. You said it. Results, right? Results are never boring. Sometimes I get this question, you know, and I ask, and my my reply usually is, you know what, ninety nine percent of people who go to a commercial gym do on Monday evening when they go get to the gym after work, bench press. This is worldwide, right? And, and they do it for twenty years, thirty years in a row. Why do they do bench press every single Monday or even twice a week or three times a week? Because it works and they like it. Because they become good at it and they enjoy the result. So if you enjoy the kettlebell press, why should you find a ration to it? We do have a ration. We use specialized variety, but here is the news. If you want to get results, you got to do the same things over and over, just better. There are variation within the lifts, but why should you change it? Why should you add more than needed? You know, usually one of the main questions I get from people who are athletes and so on is, what can I add to my training to make it more effective? And most of the times I look at the plans and I say, let's, let's decide what you need to take off. And I like to quote uh, Dan Gable he used to say, if it's important, do it every day. If it's not, just don't do it. We only, in our, we don't want to waste our time in strong first. This is why. So what we want to do is we give you whatever we know that will give you the biggest bang for the buck. It works. If it's not useful to get your goal, why should you waste time doing it? Uh, go out to dinner with your family, uh, play a chess game with a mate, uh, do whatever other, read a book, but your training time should be enjoyable, but should just, to, should last just as long as enough, as is enough to get your results there. Nothing more. And you should finish your training session full of energy and say, Hey, I'd like to do, I can do more, you know, and waiting. I'm looking forward for tomorrow's session. This is pretty much the goal. So results, first of all. Second, if you keep changing whatever you're doing, uh, how can you measure the results? How can you get a goal? Yeah, so we select our exercises, uh, go in a goal-specific manner, and the same is for the training parameters. It doesn't mean that you don't get variety. You get variety within doing the same things because you may not keep switching exercises, but the training parameters do change over time and will make it sometimes more challenging, sometimes, you know, just an easy session, but will lead you to results. And guess what? When you're good at something, you get results. You want to do more of that. You don't want to do different stuff. Absolutely. So I, 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 let's... Sorry. Yep. No, I go just, ahead. I have a great example. Here's what I do when I teach the SFL service. You know, we have the high bar and low bar max block. And then that lift, we cover the sumo and the convention. So I force everyone who's doing high bar to do some low bar also, because as becoming instructors, they need to be able to perform and teach both. And the same for sumo, conventional, and, and, and conventional and, uh, and, and sumo uh, for the deadlift. So I get them to practice both. And then I always tell them, okay, now, we're going to go a little heavier because when you go heavy is when we see compensation thing we can spot and can make better. So I said, okay, you choose your style, high bar, low bar, or conventional sumo for going heavy. And I always say, I may suggest since myself and the assistance team, we're all here to support you. Don't pick the style you're good at. Take the chance of the certification so you can, you know, you, you can get, get more eyes on you while you're doing something you're not used to. Guess what happens? Everybody does the style in which they are stronger than they used to do. And this is the thing. So if you're getting results, if you like it, you don't, you really, you don't want variety. You don't want to change. 
you want to do that. So it's not a problem. It's just a concern until you start the plans, then it won't be a problem anymore. You will enjoy it. Understood. Uh, so I, I think that uh, if we pull this back together, um, kind of end where we started, old school, old time strongman, uh, tried, true, proven uh, training strategies, updated with the best science, tested and applied, available through all the different avenues, including the Strong First Training app that you can access Strong First programming uh, with. And I think that um, it is what we do is unique. And uh, I know this because of 20 years in of teaching with Pavel and, and working with Pavel, uh, I know that the, the programming is different from what people are used to. And so one of the reasons we wanted to get on to do this is as we put the app out there and it's gotten more popular, uh, we get questions. You know, what is this? Why are you doing this? Okay, well, this is why. It's and why. so, sir, I want to thank you for your time today and sharing sharing this information. And um, hopefully this answers some questions for folks. And uh, final thought to close us out on? Uh, yes, a question to you. Why do you yes, train sir. every day? I'm sorry? Why do you train every day? Because I enjoy it. I mean, no, it's... No, not why. Where? In which location? Oh, right behind me in my exactly. in my cur in my courage corner. And to me, it's right behind my butt in my tavern down there. I have my friend. So the other great feature, the other of our programming is that you may do it at the gym, of course, but it's so flexible that you can do it in your studio. You can do it in your home gym. You can do it in the commercial gym. You can do it in the CrossFit box. You can do it outdoors, outside. You can do it in a hotel room as you're traveling. Because if you don't have a bell, if you don't have a barbell, you find a way to stick to the same principles and do it with whatever you have at hand at that time, which I do believe is one of the greatest benefits because it's you are your training tool and you take yourself everywhere. You're with yourself at all times. It just needs very minimal equipment. You want to go fancy? We have we have something for you. You want to stick to the minimalist, even only body weight? We have it. So that's also interesting, I believe. Absolutely, it's uh, one one mind, many weapons. There you go. So, which is our motto of uh, of our body weight, uh, yep. sir. Right. Come, so. it's a if riff off of uh, Marine Corps principle. So, um, Fabio, thank you so much um, you, for for everybody else that's watching or listening. Um, again, strongfirst.com, plan strong, built strong, strong endurance, uh, all terrain conditioning, um, all of our different options, strong first training app. Um, join us on the forum, and uh, we wish you all the best in your training. And uh, thanks so much. Thank you for listening.